Joe Shane and the New York Giants were busy on day one of free agency. What's going on, everyone? Nick Bellato here to discuss the trade and skill set of 25-year-old edge rusher Brian Burns, who the Giants acquired via trade. It was no surprise that the Giants were in the edge market. Big ticket free agent names like Daniil Hunter were linked to the Giants prior to free agency starting. But New York, they opted to go in another direction. Shane sent the 39th overall pick in this draft and a 2025 fifth round selection to Carolina for Brian Burns and then signed the pass rusher to a five-year $150 million contract that includes $87.5 million guaranteed. This makes Burns the second highest paid pass rusher in the NFL behind San Francisco 49er Nick Bosa. Mind you, Burns was almost sent to the Los Angeles Rams last offseason for two first round picks, but Carolina rejected the trade. Let's run through some Burns plays as I break down some of my thoughts on the acquisition. The plays you're about to watch are his sacks from last season and this past season, where he had 40 pressures, 8 sacks, and 18 quarterback hits in 2023 with an 11.1% pressure rate with a win percentage of 13.1%, ranking 26th in the league. Burns has 246 pressures and 46 sacks through 2,082 career pass rushing reps. According to NFL Next Gen Stats, Brian Burns ranks fourth in the NFL since 2019 in quick pressures. A quick pressure is a pressure earned within two and a half seconds of the snap. Since 2019, Burns has 148 quick pressures, trailing just Miles Garrett of the Browns at 219, Aaron Donald of the Rams at 189, and TJ Watt of the Pittsburgh Steelers at 189 as well. He's about as sudden and explosive as diarrhea in a person with chronic dyspepsia. That is his calling card trait. The explosiveness, not the diarrhea, but it's far from his only quality. If you're looking at the screen right now, you'll see his mock draftable. You see the elite explosiveness. Burns 97th percentile broad jump. It's evident on his tape as I play through some more of these sacks. Burns' 97th percentile broad jump is evident on his tape. He's so explosive. He has long arms. He closes with at such an alarming rate while possessing rare bend and an ability to slip around the punches of offensive tackles. There are few edge rushers in the NFL who possess Burns' ability to reduce the surface area of his chest at the point of contact, and there are fewer with his combination of burst and bend to win on high side rushes, which will be very important in this specific Shane Bowen system. Look, the Giants didn't make a commitment to Brian Burns like this solely on the fact that Shane Bowen is the defensive coordinator, but Brian Burns shares a lot of similarities to Harold Landry, who was the edge rusher for the Tennessee Titans when Shane Bowen was the defensive coordinator there. Much like Burns, Landry is a high side rusher who wins with burst and bend. This is important because Shane Bowen does not blitz nearly as often as Wink Martindale, so relying on four-man pressure packages is key. It's crucial to the defense. Bowen would use wide nine rushing angles in obvious passing situations, probably something that he learned from Jim Schwartz, who was a defensive advisor there in Tennessee. This alignment and angle gives explosive and bendy pass rushers an easier path to create pressure through the outside arm of tackles. It stresses tackles and it sets up inside counter moves while setting up an advantageous 1v1 situation for the defense. I want to play through some of these high side rushes. So a high side rush is basically winning around the edge. Can you bend through contact? Can you corner? And you're going to see through a lot of these clips that Brian Burns does not have a lot of trouble doing that. And on this specific clip, we're going to see good hand usage as well. Leverage to sack Jared Goff against, I believe that's Taylor Decker. Watch how he meets him up the arc. You can see the wide position that I was referring to before, right? Like this is a wide nine position. Look how far off number 68 Brian Burns is. So this gives him an easier path up this arc and it really stresses number 68 to take a vertical set and meet Brian Burns at the top of that arc, which also opens up the counter moves that we're going to see later in this video. Brian Burns has a plethora of. So on this play, you're going to see Brian Burns strike with the inside arm. And as the offensive tackle strikes with his outside arm, you see Brian Burns gain control of that wrist. He goes over the top and then he sinks his weight 
and he uses his length because he has all that length to bench press the offensive tackle off him, saying, you're not going to get a clean shot on my chest, right? I'm going to break that contact, and now I'm going to use my explosiveness and my bend to win around the edge. That's exactly what Brian Burns does. He uses every inch of that long reach that he has, that long arm technique, because he does have power moves, which we'll also see later. This whole he's just a finesse rusher, that's bullshit, okay? This guy can also engage in some power, and he has surprising pop on contact for someone who isn't even like 250 pounds. But you can see how he's able to break the wrist, break the contact of the offensive tackle, and then bend, 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 stay low. You can see those knees almost touching. Went around the edge, sack Jared Goff. You're going to see a lot of plays similar to this throughout his tape, just winning high side through either sheer explosiveness and burst or through hand fighting. This is somebody who has the ability to employ a variety of different hand moves. He has the ability to reduce the surface area, as I talked about a little bit earlier. And this is kind of what I mean by that, right? He's wide. He's in a four-point stance. He's going to explode off the line of scrimmage to the right side of the screen. And you can see him on his first steps. It's tight, right? I'm going right through your outside shoulder. I'm going right through your outside shoulder. On that second step, he's going to angle high. And that's going to open the tackle up naturally. So he opens the tackle up. And then he's going to bring the inside arm to chop the outside arm of the offensive tackle while he also just, he shows his back to the tackle. See how he does that? How is the tackle going to gain his chest when he has the ability? And this is a very fluid movement. This is not necessarily easy to do. You don't see a lot of edge rushers execute this. We've seen Aziz Ojolari do it when he is healthy. Not as much from Kayvon Thibodeau as a lot of people would like. Kayvon Thibodeau has to rely on more precise footwork. But Brian Burns just has an ability to bend at the waist, bend at the knees, bend at every joint that this guy has to reduce that surface area and not allow number 76 right here to get a clean look. You can see how he just right there. Just simple movement. Just going to show you my lower back. And I'm not going to let you gain my chest. And in doing this, you're not going to have control. I'm going to have upside leverage, right? That high side leverage. And then he does an excellent job bending through contact. Brian Burns is somebody who can put a ton of stress on that ankle joint and then still maintain balance and turn a tight corner. And you're going to see that through a lot of these. Here's another good representation of what I was talking about. You see how he just kind of gives the shimmy and then he dips. Dip the inside shoulder. You dip this inside shoulder and you put a ton of stress on that outside leg ankle. And then you could just bend right through the contact to get the pressure, the necessary pressure to force an incomplete pass. So this is something we're going to see a lot from Brian Burns. And it's very important because this is something Harold Landry did very frequently in Shane Bowen's system. Like I'm trying to rack my brain right now and, and really figure out who's the last pass rusher the New York Giants had that's comparable to Brian Burns from a success around the edge standpoint. And the name that keeps coming to me is Usi Umanure. And I'm not saying that he is uh, OC, but you can just see, like this is against Andrew Thomas. And Thomas ends up recovering well because Thomas is a top five tackle. But just watch how Brian Burns, and I think Andrew Thomas talked about this during the offseason about one of the more difficult players to block. It was in the NFL 100 series on NFL Network. And he said Brian Burns because you can't line him up. There is no lining up Brian Burns because he is so damn slippery. Remember how we used to call Shady McCoy slippery like a fish and ever evasive and elusive? That's what Brian Burns is for offensive tackles regarding blocking him. It's very difficult to line this guy up. And you can see it right here against Andrew Thomas, one of the best blockers in the league. You can see how he flashes the inside arm and then just dips, dips underneath the punch. I love to see that dip underneath the punch. Andrew Thomas makes contact with the five on the back of Brian Burns' jersey. And Brian Burns, from this position, a disadvantageous position, is able to get his hips oriented into the pocket and corner through contact. And you can just see how low he is. Look how low Brian Burns is on, that, on this rep. And Andrew Thomas does a great job recovering, but it forces Daniel Jones to step up into the pocket, and ultimately, it ends up in a sack. Now, think of that skill set in Shane Bowen's system that prioritizes these wide angles that are advantageous for edge rushers, and you have Dexter Lawrence coming from the middle and Kayvon Thibodeau from the other side. That is a reason to be excited, ladies and gentlemen, and you could include Aziz Ojolari on this. He's not lost. He's going to be the third pass rusher on this team now. But he's still going to find the football field. And we should hope for that because we haven't seen a healthy Aziz Ojolari in a while. But every time he's been healthy and out on the football field, he's a pretty damn good football player. And he also has the ability to do what we're watching uh, Brian Burns do right now. Not nearly to the, to the level because Brian Burns is elite in this regard. I mean, he loses his balance on this play a little bit, but watch. Again, double punch. Miss. Hit the backside of him. Look at the footwork. He's able to plant that inside foot and recover from the fact that he missed his punch so quickly that he can at least throw Brian Burns down to not get Tom Brady sacked. This is from 2022. 
still goes incomplete because of Brian Burns pressure. Because again, those quick pressures, Brian Burns is one of the best in the league at earning those quick pressures. And when you look at the other names, Aaron Donald, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett, everyone's like, whoa, those guys are great. And then Brian Burns is like, oh, he's whatever. No, Brian Burns is not just, oh, he's whatever. He's better than, oh, just he's whatever. I'm telling you, man, as long as he could stay healthy and he hasn't had necessarily troubles with, with health, but you know, it's football. People can get injured. And here's a long arm power rush move because Brian Burns can convert speed to power. I get it, man. He's thin. You know, you look at him you're like, wait, that's an edge rusher. He looks like a freaking defensive back. No, he's pretty thin, but he can really uncork some power. We'll see some of that later. But here's a nice move where he gets underneath low leverage, low hat wins, and then drive through your long arm technique, get the tackle turned, help out with the sack. There you go. Back when he was number 53. Here's him at number zero again in 2023. We're going to see him go around high side. This is a, a pirate stunt, okay? This is something that we talked about a lot when Shane Bowen was hired, right? Uh, pirate stunts are going to run pirate stunts. Well, this is a pirate stunt because you're going to have Brian Burns right here go high side. Now, he's not necessarily in the stunt. He's the backside defender forcing Derek Carr to step up into the pocket later. Frankie Louvu is going to be the looping defender with both of these individuals slanting inside. So basically, a looping defender goes around two slanting defenders and nobody blocks him because if there's nobody protecting that edge, number 50, who is wide, if 83 runs a route, number 50 is wide, he's going to force that tackle to step down. So he steps down. By that point, nobody knows where Frankie Luvu is. The center is absolutely picked. Luvu just runs right into Carr as Carr steps up to evade Brian Burns. Now, I want to show some counter moves too. Like This is just the slippery nature of Brian Burns, right? Because if you can win high side, you're going to threaten offensive tackles. And offensive tackles are going to be scared of your speed, which is going to result in oversetting. We see this all the time in the NFL. If you have an efficient and effective counter move to get back to the inside, whether that's a swim, whether that is a spin move, you're going to take advantage of offensive tackles. And Brian Burns did this a lot. And he has one of the more coordinated and smooth inside spin moves where he doesn't really lose all that much momentum. He doesn't pop up. He stays low, keeps that center of gravity low. As you'll see right here, just really quick, he uses that, that initial outside arm to just elbow on the way in and then just go right into the pocket. And even when John Runyon Jr. right here picks him up, Brian Burns still finds a way to slip off because he has such active hands and he's a very adaptive pass rusher, right? Very adaptive, stronger than he looks, gets into the pocket. Good job by Jordan Love to escape and try to make a play. It ends up going incomplete. But we see this all throughout Brian Burns' tape. We see a lot of these little inside spin moves and that is something that offensive tackles are going to think about. I can't overset against your speed. If I'm a slow-footed offensive tackle, I can't overset against your speed if I have no inside help. And I'm sure Shane Bowen will dictate the protection to some degree to where the guard is going to be occupied. So now I'm on an island against Brian Burns. And if I overset, I can get beat with an inside spin. And if I don't, I might get beat around the edge as we've seen. So Brian Burns offers that, <clears throat> that ability to threaten offensive tackles in a multitude of different ways. He can go inside. He can go outside And here. You see, this isn't even an inside spin, which is a quick arm over. And we see this a lot through Brian Burns, right? You, you just take a hard outside jab step, right? Hard outside jab, put the foot in the ground, get 78 to stop moving his feet to meet you, to square you up. And when you think he's framed, he just hits you with that. And look at the lateral agility. Look at the explosiveness that Brian Burns gets in those two steps. One, two. Look at that separation. That, that one foot is what? Maybe like a yard, a yard and a half away from the hash. And it goes all the way to past the midpoint of the hash. That is some damn good burst from Brian Burns. And he ends up earning the sack on one Geno Smith. We see this throughout the tape, as I said. Here he's going to just start up the arc. This this is a pretty poor pass set. I think that's Donovan Smith, 76. It might have been Donovan Smith before too. It might have been 76. But yeah, I think it was. So correct me there, everybody who's ripping their hair out, calling me stupid. Here's an outside spin move against Jonah Williams. Solid tackle. You see him start with the vertical set. And Brian Burns does a good job to get the footwork all mismanaged by heading inside, acting like he's heading inside. And you can see Jonah takes that step inside after taking the vertical set, spin right off to the outside, try to get Joe Burrow. Burrow does a good job managing the pocket and stepping up. And here we're going to see Burns, man. This is one of those adaptive rushes. There is a running back chipping him. So he's going to act like he's going outside through 67. You see quick chop of the outside arm. Rashad White comes and he helps out. His tackle hits Brian Burns. Brian Burns spins, maintains his balance, collects himself, gets contact on 67, and then works through the block 
and Baker Mayfield ends up escaping. But you can see, man, there's a lot of different moves going on with a snap like that. Here against Ronnie Stan. That's just a clean move. Ends up getting picked up by the guard. And now this is from D-Line Vids on Twitter. This is not mine. This is D-Line Vids, as you can see right there. But look at just how damn coordinated that is and the footwork that you need. The footwork, the points of contact that you need to execute from an upper body standpoint, you need to be such a controlled and fluid athlete to pull these types of moves off. And that's exactly what Brian Burns is. He's a controlled and fluid athlete, and he's explosive. And you can see right here, just sell like you're going high side, get the double punch, and spin right to the inside. Get 71 to fall down. The other part of Shane Bowen's system that is very important, not just winning high side for edge rushers, but it's also creating pressure with just four men. So how else do you create pressure with just four men when there's five, six man protection packages? You twist, you gap exchange, you run these games. And that's something Shane Bowen did a lot last year. And it's something that Brian Burns did. And Brian Burns is damn explosive. And let's roll a couple clips of Harold Landry doing it last year with Shane Bowen and how Brian Burns could be an upgrade over Landry in this department. You're going to watch some contact balance from Brian Burns here, man. He gets picked up by the center, and Burns is able to collect himself and crash into the pocket, resulting in his teammates getting a sack. But watch just how he is fired out of a cannon when he is slanting inside. This, these are the types of plays that we should be really, really excited about as well. It's not just the high side rushes, the use of hands, the deceptive power. It's also how fast and quick he is. Sudden is the word when he is slanting inside because this should be picked up by number 68. 68 has it dialed in. 68 gets his eyes on him at this point. And a lot of pass rushers are going to get picked up. All you need to do is get enough contact to shove him into 79 and then allow your quarterback to maneuver around the pocket. But Brian Burns is damn too quick, man. He's just way too quick, and he gets right into the backfield and then ends up sacking C.J. Beathard on that play. And you're going to see a bunch of plays where Brian Burns is just so damn fast moving through the trash and finding the angle, the necessary angle, that he needs to take to get into the pocket, to get the quarterback down on the ground or to at least just harass the quarterback. And I feel like I watched two Detroit games, right, the 2022 one and the 2023 one. I feel like Brian Burns, man, like just like had his thing with Jared Goff where he was just nailing Jared Goff. Every chance he got to just murder Jared Goff, he took. Figuratively, of course. Now I want to show some of these Brian Burns power and pop plays. Everyone says, ah, oh, man, he's just a finesse rusher. He's just a speed rusher. Nah, son. He is not just a finesse rusher. He's not just a speed rusher. This one's not necessarily overtly powerful, but you can see how he gets pop and then he realizes, I'm not going to win with my power, so let me work through the outside, get this tackle's feet behind him, which he does, work through the outside with a subsequent move, and then get after the quarterback, leading to a sack. But you're going to see some of these plays. This one right here, get the long arm, shove the offensive tackle right into the backfield. Let me get number 76. I put this reel up on Twitter. That's just two-hand pop, open to the inside, get a direct path in. Doesn't finish the sack, but number 95 does. Important. And these are plays where you could see oversetting number 76 oversets. Let me engage with power. Look how low he is. Look how low his hips are, right? Hips are very low. Knees are very low. He can get so much power through the ground into the point of contact when he is able to lower himself like this, explode low to high into contact. And when you have offensive linemen who are overplaying due to his speed and explosiveness, you can just uncork them as you see right here, and then work to the inside. And when you have another player who's a three technique, 66, the guard is going to have to worry about that three technique. This is a five-man protection. You're going to win to the inside. Again, putting stress on those offensive tackles. You can see this against Jonah Williams. Just two pushes. Again, look how low he is. Look how low he is. That's where he's getting all this power from, right? It's not necessarily just because he's this huge, strong guy. He plays with the proper leverage, and he also just has that just incredible, explosive type of pop. <laughs> this uh this offensive lineman for the Denver Broncos learned it right now his feet are in a terrible spot like he, he, there's no way for him to generate any this is poor technique on the tackles part Brian Burns just takes advantage just okay I'm just gonna push you over shove him there that must be such a such a good feeling as an edge rusher to do that to an offensive lineman you can see him do it again here just one hand just throws him to the deck gets after Russell Wilson and that's one thing about Brian Burns as a run defender and as a pass rusher is man he is relentless in pursuit.
You know, that competitive toughness and that relentless nature, that is something that you want from every pass rusher. The guy never gives up on any given play, right? So I want to see that. 70 doesn't do a terrible job here, at least standing him up. You see how 70 resets himself, but Brian Burns is relentless and he's able to get after nine, but a better quarterback probably wouldn't put himself in a position to get sacked on that specific play, but there was pressure coming from the other side. Now we see against Evan Neal and you know, you can hold your comments. I get it. It's Evan Neal, but goes right through the chest. And this is bad technique by Evan Neal as well. Evan Neal is probably scared of the speed, right? Like his feet were way too close together and Brian Burns realized that. So Brian Burns just lowered his hat and just said, I'm going to use a bull rush on this play and pushes Evan Neal backwards. And then once Evan Neal is momentum is just basically going backwards because he's on ice skates. Burns just adjusts right back to the inside to get after Daniel Jones and get the sack going back to 2022. Here we're going to see him just shove number 68 right back into Jared Goff. Now we're going to get another play against 78 where he gets stopped. And this is something that you'll see sometimes as well. I wanted to add this play specifically because you see the pop on contact, but if the tackle can reset himself, you can see how the tackle does that here. It looked like he was screwed at first. He gets out. That's pop. You see him generating that force through number 78, but then 78 sits back on the hips. You sit back and you absorb that contact. And then you can kind of exhaust Brian Burns out. And that's something you could do to every edge rusher. But then you see the damn competitive toughness and it forces Geno Smith to just kind of toss it out of bounds. And there is a penalty too. I'm not 100% certain what that was. Now I want to show some plays with Brian Burns against the run. Now, Brian Burns, he's not a he's not a bad run defender, but he is somebody in, in the system where he played with Phil Snow, with the Carolina Panthers, where he was slanting a lot. It was a lot of lateral type of movement. It's not like it was super frequent where he was just setting the edge, right? He can do that. And I just wanted to add this play in here because you see the pop in the force where he just gets both his hands on a tackle who was unsuspecting until the last second, and he could just finish you. <laughs> Again, love that part of his game that is not discussed enough. And he could do things like this, right? I'm going to set the edge. He does set a solid edge, right? Because he stays low. He has good length and he can lock you out. And he is strong enough to hold the point of attack. I want that to be clear. He's not somebody who's just going to get tossed around all the time. But this isn't something that he did all too frequently because he was slanting so much, right? So you can see him hold the edge and then he's able to get off and then make this tackle. He is a more impactful pass rusher than he is a run defender. I don't think that's uh, crazy to say, but he's capable of doing the things that you're witnessing right now. But more so, and I know this is a, a, a capping H-back who's coming across the formation, but even when it is a base Y, he tries to just avoid the block because he is so damn evasive, right? And he he can just get away from, from uh, opposing offensive players who attempt to block him. On these plays where they're, where they're going up against zone, and a tight end is coming across the formation. He either <laughs> avoids them or gets cut. He got cut a lot this past year. I don't think I have any clips of that, but he got cut a lot in these situations. This is the famous play where everyone's like, why are they allowed to do this? When Kayvon Thibodeau got hurt in preseason against the Cincinnati Bengals, it's a very common play in the NFL where they go after your knees and they hit you low. You're supposed to protect yourself. Well, Brian Burns either gets cut or he avoids in this type of manner, right? He's not necessarily someone who's going to lower his shoulder and absorb that contact and keep the, keep the, the, the rushing lane narrow. Now he can do that in my opinion, but he would rather avoid you and then make the tackle because he is talented enough and controlled enough as an athlete to do so. But you can see, this is what he's going to do more so as a run defender. I'm just going to get you out of my way, use my hands and then present my chest to the running back and blow up the play. And there's not necessarily nothing wrong with that, but there are going to be times where you're going up against good offensive tackles who can line you up and you need to find a way to defeat them by setting that edge and by sitting down and relying on your anchor. I don't necessarily think that's his most natural part, right? It's more so like this, like 74, I think it's Robinson, right? Of Jacksonville lines him up and hits him. But you can see how Brian Burns works through one side to get his eyes on it. On this play, he doesn't have contained responsibility. So he has a little bit more freedom, but he still has gap responsibility. So he gets his eyes on the running back who looked like he was going to be heading towards 54, 54 fits the run, and then Brian Burns is right there to also make the tackle. But this is a relentless player who is going to be in the backfield quite often. He's going to have more than 10 tackles for a loss. He's more than likely going to have double-digit sacks. He's a he's an absolute menace for, for opposing offenses. And this is kind of what I was talking about before. He's going to avoid the contact more so than absorb it, but he can absorb it when he's asked to. 
So my overall assessment on this acquisition is I absolutely love it. I think this is a home run. I've seen a lot of people say, why are you overpaying for this edge rusher who doesn't have that much production? Look, he has 46 career sacks and he's 25 years old. He has over 240 career pressures. If you want to get after the quarterback, there are a few guys in the league that have the upside, the ceiling, the potential of a Brian Burns. I think the system fits him very well. I think this is the exact player Shane Bowen was looking for to replicate what Harold Landry did for him in Tennessee. I don't think he's necessarily a commanding run defender in terms of setting the edge. I think he can do those things. I think he's more so, like I said a little earlier, going to evade, be elusive, find his way around blocks, and then use his explosiveness and his burst and his ability to close with instantaneously to make tackles on running backs. He's one of the best athletes that are going to be out there on any given Sunday. That's how talented he is and how controlled and how balanced he is. I love his hand usage. I think he has good footwork as well. And he's going to be able to just wreak havoc as a pass rusher. That's what the New York Giants need. When you pair him with Kayvon Thibodeau on the edges and Dexter Lawrence, you have Kayvon and you have Brian Burns flying from wide positions on third and six plus with Dexter Lawrence going through the middle. That's a recipe to get after quarterbacks that I am willing to get behind. He's only 25 years old too. I get the contract is big, but in two or three years when the cap just keeps on going up and up, that contract's not going to look that bad, right? And his power as a pass rusher, something that is not discussed enough. And power doesn't just mean you're running through the guy, right? Like we saw a couple of bull rush reps where he got underneath, he executes great leverage, has really good length as well, which he maximizes. But power is also a means to set up finesse moves, right? Like pass rushers that can use power and speed interchangeably. That's a nightmare for offensive linemen, especially when they can convert speed to power. And that's something that we've seen throughout Burns' tape. So I think this is a great acquisition. I think this is going to work out for the New York football giants if he stays healthy and everything goes well. And it says something about the New York Giants too. Like this isn't necessarily a team that is in complete and utter rebuild. Like some of us, including myself to some degree, thought they could be entering the season, but they weren't going to pay positions like running back. They weren't going to pay positions like safety. Even though Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney are both very talented football players, they didn't want to invest in those positions. Instead, they went out and they signed two offensive linemen as of right now, and they got a star edge rusher in Brian Burns to compliment Kayvon Thibodeau and to help solidify this defense and their pass rush. Look, the former defensive coordinator the New York Giants had in Wink Martindale, he brought five, six guys. We're not going to see that too frequently. We're going to see twists. We're going to see games. We're going to see a lot of things of that nature. And now you have Brian Burns creating havoc off the edge. That is just a home run for Shane Bowen and the New York Giants. And I really like the potential that Brian Burns offers the New York Giants. So I hope you guys enjoyed this brief video. Thank you so much. I'm Nick Filato signing off for Big Blue View. Please head on over to bigblueview.com. Check out all of our written content over there, our podcast, the Big Blue View Radio Network. That would be lovely. Thanks everyone and have a great day.